Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hello and welcome to the Effortless English Show. I'm AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English. Learn to speak English like a native. And this is the Effortless English Show, the show that teaches you to speak English confidently. Got some pictures to share with you today. Let's get these pictures up. Here we go. So recently... I did what's called a warrior dash. This is kind of a mud run. It's a race through mud and dirt and obstacles. You have to climb over walls, all these things. So I was standing at the starting line and getting excited. It was a hot summer day, very humid. It had been raining for several days, so the ground was wet and muddy, even at the starting point. At the starting point, there was a guy with a, with a microphone and a speaker. They were playing rock and roll music, and they counted down, three, two, one, go, boom, and we started running. Off we went, running, 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 and we quickly hit this patch of mud. So I'm running along, it's you know, already sweating because it's so hot, and we hit this, this patch of, of mud that was thick and sticky. So immediately, we ha everyone had to stop running. So I hit the mud, oh, my shoes immediately <laughs> covered in mud, and oh, had to stop running and just had to walk, what we say trudge, where you're kind of walking slowly and heavily through the mud, and the mud is sucking at my shoes with every step. After the mud area, we came to this little uh, platform. We had to jump over this wooden wall, and then we ran into the woods. So there are all these trees around, and we're on dirt paths. And I'm running on this dirt path, and the path drops down, and suddenly there's this big wet area in front of me. Like as far as I can see on the path, it's covered in dirty, muddy water. This is not thick mud. This is basically muddy water. And I notice the people ahead of me, they go in and they drop down all the way to their waist. So they drop down to their waist, <laughs> boom, in muddy water. And everyone's kind of screaming, oh, ah, uh, ugh. But I think, oh, what the hell? Let's do it. It's a hot summer day. I know I'm going to get dirty. So I just jump into the muddy water with a big splash and start wading through the muddy water. To wade through water means to walk through water. So when you walk in water, we call that wading, wading. So I was wading through this disgusting muddy water. It even had a little bit of a, a stinky smell. I don't know what was in the water. I don't want to know. <laughs> so I'm wading through slowly. And this lasted, I don't know, five minutes just wading and pushing through the water. It was very tiring. You know, it's hard work to walk through muddy water. So I'm pouring sweat through on my face. And finally I get to the end. And at the end there's a hill. And the hill is just nothing but mud. And it was impossible to run up it because people were trying to run up it and then they would fall and slide down the hill. <laughs> so what we had to do, what I had to do, was get down on my hands and knees and crawl like a baby, crawling through the mud up this little hill, this muddy hill. <sighs> and so, of course... The front of my body got covered in mud. Finally, I made it to the top of the hill. 
uh, and started trying to jog again. But it was very hard to run or to jog because the path was still very muddy and slippery. Right? So I'm sliding around, working, trying hard not to fall down. And this continued again, maybe for a mile through the woods, through this very slippery, muddy path, sliding around, almost like ice skating, sliding around, being very careful with my feet. My, of course, my legs were sore at already, getting tired because it was, a, it was hard work just to stand up, just not to fall down. Finally, we came to an area where there was a big pit so again, muddy water. I jumped into the muddy water, and on the other side, there was a wall. So you crawl through the muddy water. I crawled through it, got to the wall, already tired, and then started to climb up and over the wall. This was a small wall, maybe one meter high, but covered in mud. So again, very slippery. I crawled to the top, and then got myself over on top of the wall and then rolled over to the other side. And there was another big hole, a big pit, a big hole filled with mud. So again, I crawled through the mud and then another short wall. And I climbed up the wall, rolled over the top, and then another mud pit, another mud hole, and then another wall. <sighs> So I'm pouring sweat at this point and covered head to toe in mud. Even my face had mud on it. Finally, I get over the last short wall and again, get to a little bit drier area and start jogging. Not really running. I had to be too careful because it was too wet. So just jogged, jog, 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 jog. The path got a little bit more dry. I started jogging a little faster, started feeling like a normal run again. And then I came to this tall wall, but not really a wall. It was a net, right? It was ropes, all these ropes tied together that went up, 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 up. And you had to climb the ropes all the way to the top. And this time it was probably, I don't know, uh, six meters high, something like that. And I don't like high places. They make me very nervous. And of course, the ropes were covered in mud too. So it, may, it was extra scary. <laughs> so I kind of stood at the bottom, looked up. And, oh my God, this is crazy. And started climbing very carefully. I was afraid of slipping on the wet ropes and falling to my death. <laughs> so I climbed, climbed, climbed. Going up actually was fine, no problem. It's when I got to the top that I got quite nervous because at the top I had to go up and over. And that's when I looked down and I could see the ground below me and I could feel the rope, how slippery it was and not stable, right? It's not strong, kind of moved around at the top. So I was just holding the ropes with all my strength, with all my power. And then I slowly put one leg over and then the other leg over. And this was the most exhausting, the most tiring part of all because I was using so much power to hold on because I was afraid. I was afraid of falling. Finally, I got over and then I crawled down the other side, you know, climbed down the other side of the rope wall, uh, got to the bottom. Still not finished. Oh my God. So I continued again. There was another wall, this time made of wood. Had to crawl over that. And so finally, I got to uh, an area that had a roof with, uh, with ropes. I'll show you a picture of that one. I just showed it to you. Let's look at that one here. So it's this thing. So there was a net, like a rope net above me. You can see it up top. And what you have to do is you have to kind of swing on the rope. And below you, again, muddy water. Muddy water everywhere. So I, I went, I swang on the ropes. And as you can see, I'm 
splashing and holding on to the ropes above me to get across. And then next, they had a big uh, area with fire. <laughs> and we had to jump over the fire. And you can see me, I just finished jumping in this picture. And you can see my legs are covered in mud. My, my whole body is wet from muddy water. This is me jumping over the fire. Then we had to go over these small little pieces of wood. Underneath was this huge thing of water, about a, about a two meter drop into water. So you could hold on to the ropes and you had to run across this kind of small piece of wood. And then we went over another huge wall, down a slide into water, and then we had to swim through muddy water. And you can see me here in this picture swimming through the muddy water. And finally, I made it to the end, the finish line, covered in mud, wet. But look at that face. This is what I want you to notice. Look at my face. Look how happy I look. Look at that huge, big smile on my face. In fact, let's go back and look at some of these other pictures. This is me swimming in the muddy water. Again, look at the smile on my face. Look at me crawling across. I don't even like heights. This made me a little nervous, but look at my face again. I've got my tongue out, but I'm smiling. I'm clearly happy, having a great time. You can look there. Look at the smile on my face after I jumped over the fire. Why was I smiling? I mean, this was difficult. I had to use a lot of effort. I had to try very hard. I was working hard. I was pouring sweat. I was crawling through mud. I was dirty. I got this disgusting, nasty, dirty water into my mouth. At one time, it went up into my nose, and I was <laughs> trying to sneeze out all this muddy, disgusting water. My legs were tired from walking and running and crawling through the mud. My arms were tired from climbing. I was scared when I went over the walls because I don't like high places. So why was I smiling through this whole thing? It's because... <laughs> While it was very tough, it was very challenging, I needed a lot of effort, but it was a challenge that I chose. It was something I enjoyed. I, during this race, I was feeling something I call effort problem with the connection. Let me check on this. And it seems we are back now. We're good. Okay, good. So, I had this feeling of effortless effort. I had this feeling of, on one hand, trying very hard. I was working hard, right? I was sweating. My legs were tired. But on the other hand, it all felt kind of easy and effort. I was running. I wasn't in pain. I wasn't suffering. I was not unhappy. In fact, I felt incredibly happy. I was enjoying myself. I was having a great time. I was having so much fun to be out doing all these crazy things. T trying hard can be fun. This is the idea of effortless effort, and it's important for you too. Let me go to a Twitter question, because the Twitter question is connected to this idea of effortless effort. Here, this question says, Mov the movie technique doesn't seem so effortless. So last week, in last week's show, I talked about the movie technique. And this guy is saying that when I was describing the movie technique, it seemed like a lot of work. There are a lot of steps. You have to work hard doing it. So he's, I don't know, maybe he's annoyed. I don't know if he's criticizing me or what. But he's basically saying, this is not an effortless method using the movie technique. It's kind of hard work. You have to work hard. And that's true. See, some people get confused by the name Effortless English. 
Effortless English does not mean lazy English. It does not mean lazy English. It does not mean learn English in your sleep. You need effort. Effortless English, the effortless part, that's the final result. You will speak English effortlessly. The words will come out of your mouth without trying, without working, without pain, without nervousness. You will speak effortlessly just as you speak your own language. We see this with great athletes, great sports people, that the really good ones, it looks effortless when they're playing their game. It looks like they're not even trying. But of course, they had to work hard for many years to become that good, to become effortless. So the first thing you need to understand about effortless English is that you need to work hard to become effortless. Effortless speaking is the result. It doesn't mean you can be lazy. The second part, the second idea of effortless English is this idea of effortless effort. Effortless effort. It seems like these are opposite words, but not really. When I was in that race, I experienced effortless effort. It felt easy. I wasn't, I wasn't suffering. I wasn't angry. I wasn't upset. I wasn't bored. I felt great. I felt so happy. It was all, I, I was running through all the different parts and it just seemed like it was easy. It wasn't easy, of course, because on the other hand, I was sweating. My legs were tired. But look at my face in all those pictures. I was smiling. I was happy. Emotionally, mentally, and emotionally, it felt effortless. It felt fun. It felt easy. It felt enjoyable. But, of course, physically, I was still trying very hard and working quite hard. This is what the effortless English system is about. For example, when you use the movie technique, you should enjoy it. It should be fun. You should be smiling. You should be laughing, having a good time. As you listen to the movie and study the movie, as you speak with the characters, you try to sound like the actors, I mean, have fun, smile, laugh, be loud, be crazy when you do it. Your face should look the same as my face when I was running that race. You should have that big smile on your face as you're doing the movie technique. When you listen to my lessons, listening to the funny, crazy mini story lessons, for example, you should be smiling. It should feel fun. You're not suffering. You're not studying. You're not like this. Uh, uh. No, you're smiling. You're having a good time. Yes, on one hand, you're working hard. You're listening and, and understanding English for one hour or two hours or three hours or four hours every day. You're focused. You're listening carefully. When you are practicing pronunciation, you're listening and then speaking. You're tracking or shadowing the speakers, trying to sound exactly like them. Mentally, in some ways, you're working very hard. You're using a lot of effort, but it feels enjoyable. It's fun. You're using a lot of energy. You're smiling. You're, you're walking around. Your shoulders are back. Your head is up. You feel great as you do it. That's the meaning of English. English. It's not everything is easy and, and you don't do anything. No, no, no. It means emotionally, it feels, it feels fun. It feels exciting but you're still working hard. Great football players, great basketball players, they work hard, they practice hard, but they also love the game. 
That's why they smile. That's why they look like they're having a great time because they are. This movie lesson. All right, that is the way. So that is the movie The Way. The movie is about the Camino de Santiago. It's a walk across northern Spain. It's a walk that I myself did just a couple months ago. This Sunday, we will do a live movie chat together. So all of us will watch The Way at the same time. So it's Sunday at 12 noon, 12 o'clock noon. That's San Francisco time, Los Angeles time. If you want to join, you must find your own local time. Go online, look at the time zones, find your own local starting time. What we will do is we'll come together here on YouTube, on Periscope, and then I will we'll get ready. We'll get the movie ready, all of us at the same time, and then I'll count down. Five, four, three, two, one, play! And we'll all push play at the same time. And then, while we watch the movie, I will teach you some of the vocabulary from the movie, some of the words, I will answer your questions on Periscope about the movie and just generally chat and give a commentary live about the movie. So we're doing that this coming Sunday. All right, finally, our code. The code of Effortless English is what makes our community special. It's what makes Effortless English the family so special around the world. It's just three basic, they're not really rules, they're principles that we all follow so that we have a very positive, friendly, encouraging, supportive community. We all agree to follow the code, these three codes. What are they? Very simple. Number one, we do the best we can. Number two, we do the right thing. Number three, we show people we care. We show each other we care. Now, part of that means, for example, we do the right thing. It means here we don't talk about politics. Uh, excuse me. We don't talk about politics, and we don't talk about religion. We don't insult each other. We do the best we can. It means we know we will make mistakes, but we do our best. We try our best. And most importantly of all, we show each other we care. It means we say good things to each other, we help each other, we support each other, we are friendly to each other. This is what makes our community very special indeed. All right, that's all for today's show. As always, go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. That's EffortlessEnglishClub.com to join any of my courses. Have a great time. See you next time. Bye for now.